The most common question I get asked is how do you design a PCB motor? So in this video I'm going to re reveal every secret that I know about PCB motors so that you can design one. A PCB motor is basically made from two things. The PCB, which we call the stator, and the rotor that rotates around a shaft. Let's start from the PCB. Basically, this is not going to be an ordinary one because instead of starting with the schematics or layout, you need to start from the mechanical design or the outline. So usually the first thing that I do is go to the PCB manufacturer website and select the track width, the clearance, the size of the vias and the number of layers. You also need to decide if you're going to put the bearing on the rotor or on the stator. In my case, I'm going to put it on the rotor and then connect the shaft to the PCB. All these parameters will help us find out how large the PCB needs to be. Now the thing I know you're most curious about are these coils. How do I manage to create these perfectly curved traces? There are many scripts online that can generate these types of PCB coils, but I usually prefer to draw them from scratch to make them more custom and make the motor smaller. So to make these types of coils I usually draw a DXF file of them. If you don't know what's a DXF file, it's basically a two-dimensional drawing. We don't have to draw every layer of the coil, um, you will understand this better as we go along. But to get a clear picture of what we're going to do, here's the first PCB motor version that I did, and this is the smaller one. So let's start drawing this thing. Okay, so at the 60 degree slice over here, we need to fit one coil. From my experience, I suggest making around 36 to 40 turns to reach a face resistance of around 20 ohms. So, so far I have made 10 traces on this side and 10 on the other side. I also made a 2mm clearance over here um, to separate the coils. This circuit here represents the hole for the shaft and this extra space is to pass the traces and connect the coils. So now let's continue with forming this coil, I think I'm just going to split it in half and mirror it to make things easier. And that is one layer completed. I made these spaces in the middle large enough to fit to vias. Now we can just copy this coil in a circular pattern. The last thing that we need to do is draw the outline of the PCB motor. So this seems to be ready, let's import it in Altium. The importation process is pretty much completed. We no longer have a DXF file, but an actual PCB. I have already placed the hole for the shaft and the vias in the middle of the coils. But now we can also add the two extra layers to make it a four layer PCB. Now we cannot just copy this coil and use it on every layer. If we use basic physics, we know that the magnetic field is generated by passing a current through a wire. And as you can see here, the current must flow in the same direction. So if we copy this layer to the next one, the current would first enter the via in this direction and then start looping in the other direction. 
To solve this, we just need to flip the coil. And we can easily do it with Altium by going to Edit, Move and select Flip Selection. Now I can just join the two coils together. To go to the next layer, we need to place a via here. Now we just need to use the same technique, always making sure that the current is still going through the same anti-clockwise direction. So our first ripples are pretty much completed, if we use the right hand grip rule they are all pointing in the same direction. Now to understand how we're going to route the remaining coils, we need to understand some basic theory about brushless motors. There are two types of brushless motors, the star and the delta configuration. Now their main difference is that the delta have a higher torque because more current passes through the windings and because these are in series. To be honest with you, this extra phase resistance here will allow us to make the motor smaller because each coil will have less tears to get the same resistance as the delta. So if you want to use the delta configuration, you either have to make more tears or power it with a smaller voltage, otherwise the motor will get super hot. Now no matter which configuration you choose to go with, you need to drive the motor with a 6 step commutation waveform. Which basically means that you will always have one coil that is powered, one that is connected to ground and one that is undriven. So for this example, phase A will be magnetic north, phase B will be magnetic south and phase C will generate back EMF. To understand how we're going to drive the rest of the coils, we need to look at the rotor. Um, so basically the magnets will be connected north, south, north and south. So it makes sense that if phase A is north, A dash will also be north, B dash will be south and C will be undriven. I hope I didn't lose you in this explanation, but I think now we can continue the routing. And that's it, our new stator is completed. The last thing I suggest doing is going through the 6 step commutation waveform. And by using the right hand grip rule you can verify that every coil in every layer is connected the right orientation. Once this is done I also suggest making this whole thing part of your component library or locking it to avoid moving some traces by mistake when adding more components. Now the rotor has to be 3D printed, but to design it it's very easy because all you have to do is make one big circle with the cutouts for the magnets and the bearing. In my case I also decided to cut some extra material to make it as light as possible. So I hope you found this video useful, if you didn't understand something just ask me in the comments below and I will answer it. Um, I will show you this piece of motor in the upcoming weeks, hopefully I will receive all the components during this pandemic. So make sure to stay safe, stay at home and I will see you in the next video, bye.